Lou was legendary. I walked into an open gym when he was in high school, and he was a little bit late, and he walked in and said, check ball, and killed everybody. He made uh, the most unbelievably quick move I've ever seen in my life. Oh, and uh, remind me so much of myself. He was built for the fourth quarter. Professional score. All time leader off the bench and point score. The best in the history of the game. My man right here is an all-star. Oh, yeah. I'm happy I stuck around long enough for people to kind of appreciate what I bring to the table. When I took the Georgia job, there was, um, there was a player, he was the number one player in the country, in his class, uh, Lewis. Frank player of the nation, Lewis Williams. Number 23, he does everything for South Gwinnett. Once I saw him play, I quickly came to understand what all the hype was about. There's guys that, as time goes by, I think we forget like how athletic they were. I mean, in one word, he was electrifying. I went to one of his games when I was in the, in the eighth grade. I think he had like probably 40, so it wasn't nothing new for him. He didn't warm up for the game. He just sat on the bench and dribbled the ball between his legs with a towel over his head. And then he comes out and scores 40 points. He was just a, you know, a basketball sort of god in Atlanta. Scoring the ball was just so easy for him. Underneath, Lewis Williams. Oh, what a move by Lewis Williams, and he put it off the glass. You got to love that. He was number one player in the country. <laughs> Naismith player of the year. Playing against some of the top names in the country, KD, Ty Lawson, Monte Ellis. Lewis Williams, nobody better in high school basketball this year than this guy. The whole game was sold out. If you didn't get there before the girls started playing, you weren't going to get in. He was always hanging out with Bow Wow, Jermaine Dupree, and all those guys. Yeah, there was a lot of celebrities at our high school games. We was popping. <laughs> we became a big deal in the neighborhood. It was the greatest show on earth. It was insanity. He's averaging about 30 points a game. A lot of people think he's going right to the NBA. I didn't come in thinking I was going to play right away. I was a 17-year-old kid. Um, and once you survey the scene, you obviously recognize early on that there's a superstar in front of you in this position that you've watched and you idolize everything that they do. It ain't no real game, man. What? I ain't never seen you score in no real game. Go get taught. He was receptive to it all. With guys like us that come in with raw abilities, is you know, getting the mental part of everything. AI taught Lou how to be a pro. Don't look at the mistakes I make. I want you to be better than what I am. Over time when we developed a relationship, that's when it became more of a mentor um, and a mentee where I would start watching things. He would show me things. We would talk about things. He looked up to me. He knew how much I cared about him. It was easy for him to, to listen to me because he knew I wasn't telling him anything wrong, telling him anything to hurt him. He probably wanted me to get the full AI experience. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we did. I seen, I seen a lot with my man, so yeah. The first year or two, the only time he got off the bench was timeouts and halftime. It was difficult coming off the bench early on because of, you know, because of the level of talent that I felt like I, I possessed and, you know, the reputation that I had created for myself in the high school world. Over time, you know, that, that creates hunger, that, that creates that, that drive and where you, want, where you want more. The NBA was different, right, at this point. And the idea of a small guard who shot a lot was still kind of like, okay, Allen Iverson can do it because Allen Iverson's an all-timer. But all these other guys, all these kind of, yeah, you're all right, you're a pretty good scorer. The NBA, I don't think, was flexible enough to kind of accept that. Nobody's coming in and say, yeah, I'll be his, I'll be his break. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's how bench players are, are looked at. And I made the request to go play in the, play in the D League at the time. AI had got traded while I was down there. That, that one week that I left, they flew me back to Philly. Um, I, I believe we were playing the Washington Wizards, if my mind serves me correct. And um, I got there about at halftime. I played third in the fourth quarter and never looked back after that. Three to shoot against Wade. Blue! Lou was, the, I mean, he was an incredible scorer. The scouting report on Lou Williams, like, Jesus Christ, like this guy, right? 
so much shit in his bag. Went down to Philly for like my first trip. I was all nervous. And one of the little features I wanted to write, just a little mini thing was about how he was the king of the two for one and how we should rename it the Lou for one. The Lou for one. <laughs> anything you can name anything after him in the game of basketball or scoring a ball. Here, take that. He's definitely probably one of the more dynamic guards in the league as far as going out there and just scoring from any which way. He even has a sneaky bounce where he'll dunk on some people. I play with him in Atlanta. Lou is, is just one of those guys that just keeps you on your toes. What a defensive play by Lou Williams. Running the break. Williams hurt his leg going in. And Lou Williams hopping down to the ground. That is the absolute nightmare for any high-profile athlete, the dreaded ACL tear. That did not look good. No. This is such an important player to Atlanta, and he is in pain. I tore my, my right ACL. The only way that I could move without discomfort because I had to put so much weight on my right leg when I was moving, going towards the right or trying to make moves going, going right, it hurt. Once I started being able to dribble, I started going left because it felt good. I started fading away because my jump shot started getting blocked and I developed a brand new game. Slides left and fires. Hits, that's a three. That's a tough shot. If he goes left, the only thing you could do is hope that he miss. That's his bread and butter. He could do that with his eyes closed. Sleepwalking. Lou is an NBA starter who just happens to have been utilized as an off the bench player through the majority of his career. Everyone, I don't for some reason think that, you know, anybody coming off the bench is the second batch. If you don't do enough where the fans remember you or whether they, they respect you, you know, that'll be your experience. But no, nah, that's, that's not my experience, man. I, nah. <laughs> Booming out in South Bonnet like Lou Will. Six men like Lou Will. Drake line is like, that's. That's the height of it, right? Like, it literally did, it created like a term. When Drake name dropped Louis in the song, that was big. Being in Toronto at the time and him being the biggest artist in the world and having a whole song called Six Man and winning my first Six Man in Toronto, they kind of gave me like uh, my own soundtrack. To me, it's cool. It's like, that's how you know you got respect. This is a guy that you as a music listener, if you're not a huge hoops head, you may not know who this is. But I'm telling you who this is. It's an outside environment in the inside gym. There's a program, there's different pros playing on different teams. At the Drew League, you know you're going to see DeMar DeRozan, you're going to see James Harden, you know, you go to New York, you know you're going to run into the New York guys, you know, you go to the Goodman in, in D.C., you know you're going to run into Katie and all of those guys. And so us having our own, um, our own thing, you know, ATL. You know, so I kind of talked to, you know, some of the guys on my team who was from Atlanta at that point in time in Houston about going down there and playing. Um, and I kind of went down there and, you know, just happened to get on the team uh, with uh, some guys that I kind of knew uh, from the college circuit. I might have been out of town and they had, just, uh, they had just put some guys on my team. I started getting phone calls like this dude with the Houston Rockets played on your team. He was killing everybody. And I was like, who? They was like, much as hell. And they like, he in here dunking everything. I was trying to find an open run or any type of you know pickup or any type of good play I can get in to you know just improve my game. He spends a lot of time playing pickup in the summer. He's always playing basketball. He's never taking time off. You can go in the gym and do a thousand workouts with cones and chairs and stuff like that, but those aren't real targets. Those aren't people that's trying to guard you and moving as you move. You know, Trez goes everywhere and play, and he played with Lou. And Lou called him back to play again. Called him back to play again. Played in the championship together. And Ever since then, they've been having that little bond. If you're around this game long enough, you'll find your running mate. I wonder if he was also doing a lot of teaching as well, you know, just letting me know different things like how he wanted screens done and, you know, certain spots or where he wanted the ball. We ended up hooping together. Um, the season went on, and I ended up getting traded to Houston. That same season that I had met Trey, so we ended up being teammates. The Rockets have reached an agreement on a trade for the Clippers CP3. 
Lawrence, I remember everybody calling us, telling us all the guys we got. Tres's name was one of them. We learned very quickly in training camp, and we learned in practice what he can do. He didn't play a lot in, in Houston, uh, but what we liked about him in Houston was every time he did play, he was one of those guys that just made something happen. He really like opened people's eyes like, wait, who is this guy? This guy can play. This guy has a motor. This guy is tough. Careful. Montrez lays it in. We embraced it and we just try to bring a whole new, different energy to the team. We start to get a reputation in the NBA with our bench. It's a bench that you really feel like if uh, you get down, you, you have cavalry. Him and Lou, they got their chemistry together and then that kind of just makes our team go. It's kind of an unguardable combination. You have to pick your poison. That two-man game is probably one of the best two-man games in our league right now. Those two score 1.2 points per possession every time they run a pick and roll. For perspective, the best offense in the league is going to give you about 1.16. Eye contact, certain places on the floor, he know exactly where I'm going to go. I know exactly where he's going to go. We talk about two guys that fit perfectly, right? Having a savvy pick and roll guy is really important because he understands immediately, well, I'm not covering that over the top, I'm throwing this lob. And you know, with Trez's energy and athleticism, he's a go get it, right? Like, I mean, basically, it doesn't matter where you throw it. The anger and ferocity that he plays with, I like that you can see sometimes a big man on the other team being like, I gotta deal with this. Montrez's ability to set screens, slip screens, slip to the pocket, explode to the rim, hook shots, floaters, it makes them a real, real dangerous duo. It's a situation where opposites are track. He's pumping up the crowd. Uh, you know, he, he's doing that celebration like this. Uh, and then and Lou is, he's always just so calm and cool and collected. We got some fiery personalities in there and I'm one of the laid back ones. You know, he doesn't say a lot, but when he talks, if he does say something, everyone listens. He's a phenomenal leader. Um, you know, he loves the uh, Uncle Lou, um, you know, old man in the locker room thing. Lou has that, that, that kind of personality that uh, he's not a very talkative guy, but when he says some things, it's either real serious or real funny. <laughs> That's just Lou. <laughs> I don't know, like I'm not the old preachy dude. <laughs> I'm not the I'm not the old preachy guy in the locker room. If if I'm asked something that somebody want to talk to me about something, we'll speak about it. Or if I genuinely have an opinion and I feel like I can help, I'll say something to somebody. Him being in that uh, six man and him coming off the bench and kind of, you know, being in that role, he already knew how to handle it, you know, so just being able to pass those words of encouragement, it definitely helped me out a lot, really. Amir Johnson, Chuck Hayes, Kyle Lowry, and DeMar DeRozan, we all have a group chat um, from our, our Toronto days. And i never forget, I had got traded and I, it was like 3.30 in the morning in China. I was in China um, and my agent had called me and, I, you know, I had been traded before, but um, once I came to the Clippers and that was my third team in basically a year, I told my guys, I said, yeah, I think, I think this is my last year. You know, like, I think this is, I think I've come to the end of the road. Being in your 12th year, you know, pretty successful run, you like, you know, maybe it's the game changing on me. He could easily gave up. You know, my conversation with him, I said, hey, man, you know, this is when you stamp your pages now. I told him from day one when he got here, I said, you're gonna love playing for Doc Rivers. Sat down with Doc. And he was like, I don't know what they thinking, but this home, so you can get comfortable being here. The sixth man of the NBA season. Oh, Lou Williams. Shoots for the win. Bingo! It's an honor to receive this award tonight. I want to thank the Clippers organization for giving me an opportunity to be myself, allow me to go out on the floor, do my thing. I remember writing. Oh, Lou will, Lou will never have a season like he had last year again. That was a one-time only thing, and that, that, incorrect. Lou will fire the three. Bingo! Lou Williams! He's the ultimate starter off the bench. Hey, I'm coming home. I'm the nice coach. He's proven Dallas wrong consistently, year after year. And it's funny, the older he gets, the better he gets for some odd reason. Lou's having one of the best seasons off the bench in NBA history. Lou Williams, oh, goes slammed up! Got to his left, fires a score. He's amazing. 
I mean, he's absolutely amazing. He doesn't shy away from the big moment. Wants to be in that moment. Wants the shot at the end. Williams. Good! What a shot! Lay it up. And in! Lou Williams! That should be enough to make him the highest scoring bench player in so. the history of the NBA. The 14th years, I'm not shying away from the attention. You know, make, make some noise for me this time around because I've had plenty of years where nobody cared. It's about time that he's uh, given the recognition and uh, basically the honor that he definitely deserves. There's no way you can sit here and say any other name as six man of the year. Being the go-to guy off the bench is it's almost an unprecedented in NBA history. He always had the physical ability, but you can tell, you know, where his mind is at. He wanted to be more than average. And ultimately, you know, here we are today. Simmons bringing in five seconds to go, tie game, seat belts are passing. Lou Williams for the win! Bingo! Oh my goodness! Woo -hoo -hoo. That just happened! I came from nothing, basically, in my career. You know, that's something until, and then it grows, and then it grows. Passing around the room until Lou gets it. All right, passing around the room until Lou gets it. Yes, sir. Have an opportunity to win another six man, have an opportunity to go to the playoffs with this team. I'll embrace this one. Personally, for me, it'd be a great experience, you know, to play this basketball game. You know, I'm sure it'll be. <laughs> That's Allen, huh? Sometimes we all want to get real fancy, just get behind your own car and talk in your camera. Oh, what up, world? Here in Cleveland. Whoa, Lou Williams. I'm excited. I'm ready to show on my new outfit, see what I got on. You know?